Hello and welcome to Made in Siberia. I've got really exciting news to tell you. Last year I applied for a PhD at the University of Surrey and this week I finally received a note that I've been accepted and I can begin my studies today. I'm going to be working at the Institute of Communication Systems 5G or now called 6G Research Center and my subject of uh, research is going to be reflective intelligent surfaces and meta surfaces. And we're gonna go to Guildford and I'm gonna show you around a bit. But before we do that, I just want to tell you more about my research topic. <laughs> to transmit signal from building A to building B without using any wires. So how are we gonna do that? Well, let's first define what is signal. So signal is something that we want, but we also got noise, and noise is something that we don't want. And noise is literally everywhere. It's everywhere around our signals. like that so we want to avoid our signals getting mixed up with noise and someone else's signal can be noise to us so there may be more signals coming this way and our signal is coming that way and if they collide then there's gonna be interference and they're all gonna become noise as a result of this so to help us distinguish between signals in noise, we use what is known as coding and decoding algorithms. And basically this means putting your signal inside a particular framework, which we can send out and then we can decode that and receive information from it by using pre-agreed algorithms. So now that we establish that and we've got our encoded signal here, and we can decode this signal at the receiver. So now we need an actual physical channel. And in order to build that, we can explore the properties of electromagnetic wave propagation, otherwise called radio propagation. And in the essence, electromagnetic waves are created by fluctuations in the electromagnetic field when electrons move inside a conductor. So, we need to add a conductor to buildings A and B, which will transmit and receive electromagnetic energy respectively. And we can add that to our scenario here, where we can have this and this. And those are our antennas. So they can now transmit and receive signals accordingly, and we will decode and encode them respectively, so we can actually build a physical channel. And everything's great so far, but suddenly, Bob the Builder comes along and he erects a very tall building right in between our buildings like that and this is a residential building and there are a lot of people living in that building but the problem is that now we don't have a line of sight anymore we can't communicate because electromagnetic waves do not propagate very well through a concrete. So we are blocked. We can't talk to each other anymore. So can we fix it? Well, in existing 4G and 5G architecture, we can. But this means building more base stations or more antennas. So we're gonna have to add an antenna there and an antenna there. And now we can talk why building C to one another again. But the problem is that it could be quite expensive because previously we just used our own network, but now maybe Bob comes from Vodafone and he would want a substantial fee for passing our communications. And we're gonna have to compete with all the users in this building because uh, they all wanna have to use the same channel. And this is how it becomes really complicated. At this point, it is worth noting that the whole process of antenna propagation is extremely inefficient. 
First of all, antennas radiate in all directions. They don't really know where antenna B is located or where antenna C is located, they just radiate everywhere. Therefore, if we're only interested in receiving signal at the point B, then we're only going to receive a tiny fraction of the transmitted signal and everything else will be completely lost. Secondly, when we have substantial distances between objects, we cannot send a small signal and expect it to be received. It's just gonna mix up with other signals and become noise. So we need to amplify our signals before we transmit them. And that means we have to use bulky amplifiers which have 50 to 60% efficiency at best and the rest is dissipated as heat inside those amplifiers before it even reaches the antenna. So what else can we do to try to fix this problem? So let's imagine that we have a lamppost here and a street that's going somewhat this way and perhaps we can attach an amplifier and forward relay to this place which effectively will act like another antenna and now we have a channel that goes this way we can receive signals from building A and pass them on to the building B and uh, but the amplifier and forward relay is another lossy medium because it has to work in the same environment it has to receive signal and amplify it and transmit it in all directions according to its radiation pattern which is basically how it works for antennas so this is where intelligent reflective surfaces come along because instead of amplifying forward relay we could add a surface like this here and this is gonna be actually I'm gonna draw it like this but it's actually gonna be tiny it's gonna be less than half a wavelength le uh, in uh, thickness essentially IRS is a type of a relay in that sense that it will receive signals and it will pass them on but it can be either passive or active and the passive IRS will not consume any energy it will be built of what is called metasurfaces which practically means materials that do not exist in nature and that have been specifically developed so that they have features that are most suitable for electromagnetic wave propagation and an active IRS will mean that it can also follow the user so if for instance instead of building B it was a person and a person was walking on the street then an active IRS will be able to inform its signals and follow the user and predict its movements so the surface like this consists of many tiny elements which we call cells and each cell is configurable because it has tiny diodes which are in turn connected to a microcontroller like this so the MCU might be an FPGA or another fast uh, microcontroller which can control the signals in real time and this means that we no longer have to transmit signals in all directions we can concentrate our beam in a particular direction where we expect our users to be so the big idea here is that we can modify our channel according to our environment and we can control it with software finally the efficiency advantage when using RIS compared to relays increases when we consider using it with higher frequencies in millimeter wave range which is basically what we're going to use in 5G and 6G networks in the future such networks will work in 24 to 29 gigahertz range and at this point application of conventional amplifying forward relays is not practical at all so this is why this is such a hot research topic and is so exciting to work on one final note about beamforming concept is that I like to think about it from the loudspeaker point of view and this is basically because I'm a sound engineer by my first degree if you have ever been to a large music venue you have probably seen arrays of loudspeakers hanging from the ceiling and you may as well wonder why not to use a single loudspeaker why why there are so many small loudspeakers grouped together and not a single one 
and basically beamforming is the answer. And although you can use a single point loudspeaker, it is extremely inconvenient. Actually, a loudspeaker array kinda acts like a single source loudspeaker, except you can control phase shifts for each loudspeaker within the array, and that way you can adjust the sound pressure in the venue and you can determine precisely where you want the sound waves to add up and give you plus 6 dB of gain, and where you want a complete cancellation and basically no sound at all, which you will typically get at the side of the lobe of the array. And this is why you can have a normal conversation on the sides of the array, but in front of it you will probably need a pair of uh, headphones not to go deaf. And this level of environment control which is achieved with very sophisticated software that can even adjust itself and find uh, gaps in sound and fix them and feel, create a uniform response everywhere in the audience, this level of control is impossible for wireless system and wireless networks today, but it can become a reality if we consider using RAS technology for future networks in 6G and 5G. So without further delay, let's go to Guildford and see what the 6G Innovation Center actually looks like. So welcome to Guildford. It's a beautiful warm day and in, for January it's actually incredible. You can almost wear a t-shirt. Uh, this is just ridiculous. Um, one would hope that with a PhD studentship I can also park for free, but this isn't the case and so I have to pay. <laughs> Space Center, which we built satellites. There's a library. It's really quiet today, it's exam season. Everyone's really stressed out. to complete my registration so that's it I'm officially a student now uh, how exciting uh, I just completed my registration and I'm going to the ICS building and gonna have a look at my workspace yeah some cool graffiti Sound recording studio. And here we are, the infamous 6G center. Just gonna walk towards it and then we're gonna go inside. Let's see if this works. So this is my desk, this is where I'll be working for the next four years on my research project. Got a nice view here. Alright, so that's it. Please hit light and... <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. Hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.